This is an ortho K case where the patient is getting good post wear vision, a little bit overcorrected, but VA is good, and the patient's complaint is halos at nighttime. Um, I haven't seen the post wear topographies, but I'm assuming the treatment zone is centered. Uh, decentered treatment zone can also cause halos, and usually uh, centering that lens a little bit better will help. But assuming the lens is centering well at night, and the patient uh, just has a small, uh, treat, smaller treatment zone than needed, then uh, the way I've been handling these cases lately is to add uh, ice versity to the lens. Um, in this lens, you can't really move the OC that much farther out into the periphery, and uh, I haven't found that to make a real huge difference in treatment size anyway. I think the key for us is we want to move this point where the tear graph crosses 20 microns. Right now we're at about 3.5 millimeters. We want to move that back as far as possible. So um, if we go into the bottom corner here and add in, I found that plus 0 0.2 seems to work pretty well. Uh, by the way, also we want to note that our current topo demand is 4.07 because this is going to change when we add in the asphericity. Okay, we see that the topo demand has gone up 4.58, and we need to reduce that, especially since the patient has a, a good amount of hyperopia post lens wear. So I'm just going to come to the red control point in 100% mode and decrease until we're pretty close to the 4.07 where we were before. Okay, so that's pretty good. You'll see the lens power is really different from before, and that's just because this lens um, has an aspheric center zone to it now, and um, the what the computer does, it calculates an average power and uh, changes the power accordingly. So uh, we really, our topo demand is the same, our average topo demand is the same as before, but the lens power is going to look a little bit funny. Um, at 0.27, I'm also going to go around, and oftentimes when we change uh, demand or power, the uh, individual meridians don't change uniformly. So 0.27 there and 0.6, we can probably make this a little bit more uniform. So I'm just going to change in 25% mode each of the meridians until we're pretty close. Let's Photoshop that one. Okay, so we're pretty close to minus 26 or 27 in most of these meridians. Uh, you'll see that our topo demand has gone up again. So I'm going to go back to 100% mode, and we'll drop this down. It's kind of a seesaw effort, but um, we'll eventually get to where we want to be. So 4.02, power of minus 0.65. And that's still pretty uniform all the way around. Okay, so now we have a lens that has similar uh, topo demand to the original, but we have shifted the point where the tear graph crosses 20 microns back to a 4.2, and uh, that lines up pretty well actually with the patient's pupil, at least as it was measured during wave. And so this should give a little bit wider treatment zone, hopefully. Um, help with the glare that the patient's experiencing at nighttime. It'll be the same strategy for the left eye. You want to note that your initial topo demand is 3.81. We'll add about a positive S factor of 0 0.2. And then we need to adjust the uh, demand here to get to our initial topo demand. Go through each individual meridian in 25% to even out the power, and you might need to make one more final adjustment back in 100% mode to the topo demand so that it is the same as the original lens. And you'll see this, um, even just adding in the asphericity shifts the 20 micron crossing back a little bit, and it'll shift even more once you're finalized uh, tuning up the lens. So uh, hopefully this will help with the halos at nighttime, and good luck with your patients.